Uh, my name is Matt Trimble. I'm from LRS. Uh, I see a few familiar faces in here. Um, Louisiana Rehabilitation Services, our main goal is to get people into careers, um, people with disabilities, and we do that by funding, supporting them in nearly any way possible, as long as they can link it to it being something necessary for their employment. A um, couple of programs that we have to do that, the main one pretty much, if you know about us at all, it's a vocational rehabilitation, but something that we offered through that were pre-ed services and they have broken that out into a program that kind of ties more into the high school um, age range. And that age range to be eligible for the pre-ed services is 16 to 22. These are services that can go on to graduation or, you know, if they stay for a uh, post program till uh, they age out of 22. Um, they're provided through vendors or in the case of Bozier, you actually have Bozier um, employees that offer them and they are free. The only stipulation is the student needs to have an IAP or a 504. And pre-ETS is pre-employment transition services. Um, I think that's a relatively new term. It, it used to be called pets and apparently that was kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah called the students pets. They didn't like that. Uh, <laughs> So uh, through pre ets though, your, uh, your students get job exploration, uh, self-advocacy, post-secondary options, counseling, and work readiness training. Um, job exploration, obviously, you know, what jobs are available out there uh, according to your abilities, self-advocacy, how can you communicate well with your employer so that you know what you need to be successful so that they know what they need to provide you. Uh, Post-secondary options, what can you do, what kind of trade schools are available, what kind of colleges are available, uh, any kind of training that they may need. And work readiness is just general, just general skills, how to work, uh, how to write a resume, how to, um, how to type, uh, do just basic things like that. I always use the example, one of my coworkers didn't know how to attach files to the emails. Uh, so that was something that I was like, you probably could use some work readiness. Uh, but anywho. Uh, the main goal is to get them trained up to do a Weevil experience, which is work-based learning experience. That's placing them on a job out in the community that they can actually work and they're paid for it and make some money. Um, the main goal is to get them ready upon graduation so that they can move seamlessly into the workforce. That we don't want any kind of lag. We don't want them to get out there and uh, you know doubt their abilities. We want them to feel comfortable going into the workforce. Um, execution of services. That. Uh, would probably be better explained by you or Matt or anybody yeah. of the Bozier um, team. I uh, can kind of go over that. I know um, within the past couple months we've had some students that have been um, signed up during an IEP meeting and it maybe was a meeting that we weren't present um, and then we find out because you know Mr. Trimble or Mr. Matthews will call us. It's really important if there is a student um that would benefit from pre-employment transition services please email myself or matt watson or zach person um, because when we complete the the referral process and the application we turn that into lrs but not only now we have it on our roster and we know wait a minute this student has signed up in the fall semester but they may not necessarily receive services until spring but we've had students that have signed up and they didn't receive any services and they graduated and they were like, well, what was Bozier doing? And I was like, had no clue that it was a pre ed student. So it's just really important because we provide those services if we don't know that they've been approved or they've signed up or requested, then they're not on our radar. And so it's hard to provide services if we're not aware that they... Um, qualify for those services um, so just make sure you know as many students is as, as you know as you want I mean we we can service them it may not be two days a week like some of our significant uh, population classes it may be once a month it may be virtual it may be one-on-one -on -one. it depends on the individual need of the student but just make sure if you have a student in mind email us or maybe if you see Mr. Trimble or Matt Clyde 
you know, say, hey, and then we can communicate together and get them signed up just to make sure that we're all on the same page. That's um, the main point that I, yeah. I wanted you to make because there are a couple of you guys that I have taken applications at IEPs and stuff, and that, that's how LRS wants us to do it. If anybody's ready to sign up, I'm supposed to sign them up, but we're finding, with not only with you guys, but with Cato too, there were kids falling through the cracks. So is it how by the book it should be done? Probably not, but it was best if you contact Sabrina or Matt just because there, we just don't want that lapse in communication to cost a kid uh, and they don't get their uh, services. And the other thing was I wanted you to, uh, to make a point of are they going to be in class? Are they going to be off campus? Like how does, how does that work? Um, because that's the biggest question that I get usually is are the kids going to be here? Are they taking them out of my class? And, it depends on the individual student, it depends on their schedule, it depends on if they are going to participate in the virtual workplace experience with Mr. Watson. If they are, then they'll be off campus, but you guys will work together with him and Mr. Burson and the school counselor to make sure that they have those work classes or credits. Um, some of the other students, they're serviced on campus. So really we can't, you know, you can kind of determine too when you're meeting with with the parents whether, you know, if you know that they don't have enough credits uh, to have work credits, then you know that they'll be serviced at the high school. You know, if you know that their schedule says, wait a minute, they're full, there's no way they can do virtual workplace experience, but we want them to have that, then still let us know, we'll get them signed up and we will figure out a time in their schedule where we can pull them out independently and work with them for 30 minutes a month or whatever it is that you know doesn't interfere with their core academics. Good. Good question on that. Let's say that we have a student that we want to get signed up for pre -ed. However, we know in their schedule they're not going to be able to participate in the virtual workplace. Um, we talk to the parents at the IEP meeting and the parents say, yes, we want to get them signed up. Then my question for you is logistically for them to get signed up, is there an actual application that the parent needs to turn into you guys? You we'll, we'll bring that um, form and we'll, like, if you just email us and say, we just had an IEP for this particular student, their parents want them to receive services, send us the parent's name, their contact information, and we will contact the parent review all of the stuff because there's different steps and I want to make sure that everything is reviewed um, before they sign up for the services and then we will we'll make contact with the parent whether we go to their office we've gone to the house we've done it electronically <coughs> to get all that signed up so um, but yeah just let us know email us and we'll get it done and on our end of the application it's fairly simple it's, it's now probably like I think it's three pages, and uh, if the student's 18, they, their parent doesn't even have to be there. We, we like to include the parents, but they can sign everything themselves. Uh, benefits of engaging in it, uh, prepares them for the workforce, uh, they get to do some networking, exposes them to different career paths and job interests, but the biggest thing is it links them to us, so applying graduation, we can reach back out to them and offer them the VR services, um, and that's something we've been trying to iron out. I know that uh, Ms. Green, we encountered each other last year and kind of figured out that how LRS was wanting to, the, the word transition is thrown around a lot. It's not necessary, it's not like, okay, the kid has a free S case and it just becomes a VR case. So we've been trying to iron that out. I think we've got how we're going to start doing that more smoothly uh, because with the VR services, pretty much, Anything that you need for your employment, um, be that assisted technology, if that's training, we help provide that. We, we fund that, but the biggest thing is the college. That's, that's the big draw. Everybody wants their college degree paid for. Um, to get the VR services, there is an eligibility determination. It's a lengthier process. It requires more documentation. We're going to have to have the FAFSA completed. Uh, Parent and guardian, parent or guardian will likely need to be there. A lot of information on that. The kids do not seem to know uh, social security numbers, things like that, whether or not they get SSDI, things like that. Um, and what we, I've tried, I've pushed for this. We have two things to do with VR. We have a referral, which is where we kind of take information and that just sets up 
a uh, point of contact where we reach out to the student, to the parent. Um, we're not probably going to do the referrals because with the system we use, we cannot input a referral if they have a pre S case open. Um, they will take the referral and they keep it on their desk and hopefully they call them. So, yeah, so that's not very efficient. What we're probably going to want to do is if you have a student, they're doing pre ETS and they want to start getting their VR services uh, in motion for graduation, we need to come and do a direct application with that student or if you guys set up a time where we could come do that. Like I said, definitely would like the parent and guardian to, uh, or guardian to be involved with that just so there's nothing that's not finished and they have to come up to our office anyways. Um, and the VR services, once again, are free. I think everybody knows that, but good selling point. Um, does it cost anybody anything? That's another big question I have is the parents are like, is this going to interfere with scholarships? Is this going to hurt, you know, uh, uh, anything that we're receiving? That's going to, it doesn't hurt scholarships or anything like that as far as any kind of disability or anything like that. They can discuss that with the counselor and work that out. Um, they're going to be linked up with a vocational rehab counselor and um, they can provide services to them that pre ETS cannot. That's the tuition assistance, the physical and mental rehab, supported employment, assisted technology, job placement, rehabilitation. Um, that's some of them. That's the main things. It's not all of them. We even do home modifications and vehicle modifications. Um, we can order evaluations and interest inventories. If you have somebody that comes into our counselor and they're not quite sure what they want to do, we can work with them and try to get them more uh, directed toward the path, and we will develop with them a, a plan for employment and identify the goals, and at that point we'll start, you know, figuring out what's going to be your obstacles to this. If, if you know, you have to have a college degree to do this, do you need training, um, is there some kind of technology, laptop, you know, anything like that that's going to, to be successful doing that. Um, another good, uh, big advantage of the VR services is continued if the student gets in there and decides this isn't the path I want to do, come back and reevaluate. Uh, even if they complete their goal and maybe they work, say, for five years and they decide, well, this wasn't for me, come back to us. Um, we assist in uh, gaining, maintaining, and advancing employment. So we want you to get a job. Uh, if you have a job, we'll help you uh, to keep that job. If something comes up, I have a, a, a friend of mine who has a knee injury, could not stand at his job. So, you know, come to us. We figure out how can you perform this job. If you can perform this job, how do you do this in a way that's modified to fit you? Um, we also advance employment. So we have people who are self-employed. Uh, best example I can give you would be like a barber. Um, we have one, the particular uh, case that I'm thinking of, for example, she's a barber and she wants to advance her clientele expand her clientele so she needs a special chair for her doing nails. I don't get my nails done, but apparently there's some big super <laughs> chair that they need to do that. Um, so we are assisting her funding the chair so she can uh, expand her clientele. Um, you don't have to go down. I got it right here. A um, couple of uh, success stories. Usually when people I feel like there's kind of the stigma to LRS. It's kind of like we're just getting people into jobs. And some people do. They just they come, they just want to work, and they're kind of just put in somewhere. Um, but we do have some really good success stories. One of them is uh, Darren Broussard. He's a CAP advocate for disability rights in Louisiana. Um, we have an LSU, uh, LSU professor, uh, Deshay Scott, that has uh, uh, utilized our services. Laura Jones. Uh, don't know if she's still a coordinator at Bipsy, but she's one. Um, and the one I think that is pretty neat is Danny Williams. He's a Grammy uh, winning musician. And he came through VR and we kind of helped him set up his, uh, his uh, music career. And they wrote the soundtrack for Princess and the Frog, his band did. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so, and I. Of course, these, these are all on videos, and we've got them on our wall of fame up at our office, so uh, I, I didn't think I needed to get permission from any of them. I was like, your face is already out there. Um, if you want any kind, of, uh, any kind of paperwork, I have booklets for the VR services. I have flyers 
and uh, a couple little uh, leaflets for the pre-ed services. If you want those, if you think those would be helpful to hand out to parents, to students, just uh, get with me and I'll give you some.